This video from Learn Electrics follows on from our recent video on dimmer switches for incandescent lamps. Many of the principles and methods of operation behind those older technology dimmers are similar for LED dimmers, but of course there are some important differences. Technology has moved on with the introduction and development of new products, new methods and new materials. Both dimmer types have their place and we hope that you benefit from this video on LED dimmers. Let's look first at what is actually in a waveform. What can a waveform tell us about itself, about the circuit it is being used in and what we can do with it? We're all familiar with the standard UK and European frequency of 50 Hz or 50 cycles per second. But the principles here will work equally well with 60 Hz as in North America and many other countries. So let's make a start. A simple AC waveform as shown here is often called a sine wave. It follows a basic mathematical rule using the sine of an angle as its mathematical root. The waveform will swing positive, then negative and return to the positive. This is called a full cycle. Just the positive half or just the negative half make up a half cycle. Half cycles matter with dimmer circuits. There are 50 full cycles per second in a waveform in the UK and 100 half cycles. From crossing the midpoint line shown orange here, the positive half cycle of the waveform travels in a positive direction and returns to the midpoint line. This is the positive half cycle. The negative half cycle crosses the midpoint line in a negative direction to return to the midpoint line a few milliseconds later. The waveform has edges and these matter to us as well. If we think of time and the waveform as travelling from left to right, the left hand side of each half cycle is called the leading edge. The right hand side is termed the trailing edge. There is a leading edge and trailing edge to every half cycle and it is what we do with these that differentiates between a dimmer switch for incandescent lamps and a dimmer switch for LED lamps. Yet another way of naming the parts of a waveform is the concept of the waveform being positive going or negative going. This is to do with the slope or angle of the waveform. If we start with the most positive part of the waveform, the top if you like, the voltage is going negative all the way to the bottom of the waveform from left to right here. At the bottom of the slope it changes direction and now starts to move in a positive direction all the way back up to the top of the waveform. Then it changes to negative going again, then positive going and so on. We call the top and bottom of each waveform the peaks. We have a positive peak and a negative peak to each full cycle. The midpoint line is also labelled on this drawing which for us is the zero volts line. The waveform, the voltage is peaking 50 times per second in the positive sense and 50 times per second in the negative sense. Older technology dimmer switches are still in use today and they are what we call leading edge dimmers. The front edge of each half cycle is cut off. The leading edge has been chopped off. This type of dimmer switch is used for dimming incandescent or halogen lamps and the type of technology used means that these dimmers have a high minimum load and as such they are not always ideal for low energy lighting such as LEDs. So let's pop that one into the memory bank for now. Leading edge dimmers will chop off the leading edge. This simpler to manufacture technology is ideal for incandescent lamps as we shall see. And then we have trailing edge dimmer switches, completely different, using more modern technology and different methods of manufacture. The waveform starts at zero and is then stopped after the half cycle has started. The trailing edge, the last bit, has been cut off. Modern dimmers use this method of limiting the output. It gives smoother control over dimming and the switches do not buzz in use.
making them ideal for most premises and situations. These dimmers have a very low minimum load, all the way down to zero in some switches, and they are ideal for low energy lighting such as LEDs. Trailing edge dimmers work by cutting off the trailing edge of each half cycle. Starting from zero volts, the voltage steadily increases, and this makes them ideal for LED lamps. The technology to make LED lamps dimmable relies on some of the components that do this being built into the dimmer switch, and the rest of the components being built into the base of the LED lamp, which is why we must have a correct pairing of LED dimmable lamps and LED dimmer switches to make them work properly together. Before we move on to LED lamps, let's take a look at incandescent lamps, which are not energy efficient. Incandescent lamps illuminate by burning hot, white hot. At 50 Hz, they do not have time to cool between half cycles, which is 100 half cycles per second. So light continues to be emitted for a very short time after the power is removed, and then the next half cycle arrives. Plus, our eyes have persistence of vision. It takes a few milliseconds for our eyes to adjust to any changes in light, and so most people cannot see a flicker. But there are some people who can detect a flicker as low as 50 Hz. And the big drawback with incandescent lamps, 80% to 90% of the energy used is given off as heat. Now we can look at making the LED lamps dimmable. This uses a technology called pulse width modulation. That sounds complicated, but it isn't. As we saw, incandescent lamps continue to output light after the power drops to zero. This is because the light comes from the incredible heat generated in the filament. We also have persistence of vision, as we said, and so we do not see the gaps between the on and off periods. LED lamps, on the other hand, are different. They are either on or they are off. And some people can see the gaps between the on and off periods, known as flicker. And the LEDs also need a DC voltage source. We switch the AC on and off inside the dimmer switch to achieve the required level of dimming. The switched voltage then passes through a voltage controller inside the lamp body that converts the AC to DC and then reduces the voltage by using the voltage regulator that will limit the voltage to 12 volts DC for a 230 volt AC input. And then it will smooth the output to the LEDs to be a DC voltage with a slight ripple. This ripple will be at 100 Hz, twice the 50 Hz input. Remember, the two half cycles, one positive half cycle and one negative, making 100 half cycles per second. And for most people, any flicker is undetectable. The on and off periods of the dimmer reduce average DC voltage input according to their setting. Capacitors inside the lamp will store electricity like a battery, and the result of this and the reduced DC voltage means that the LEDs are on for most of the time, but illuminated at different intensities. With the dimmer set to 50%, the average voltage experienced by the LED lamp is just 6 volts. So how does the lamp convert the chopped AC voltage into DC for the LED lamp? Components inside the lamp body will do this. These are often manufactured now as just one little microchip with maybe one or two discrete components. They will have an AC to DC rectifier part that makes all the positive and negative half cycles into positive half cycles only, so that we only have a positive output at 100 peaks per second. Then, components called capacitors will smooth out these peaks, absorbing electrical energy from these peaks and then slowly releasing this energy or voltage to the LED lamp part. And just how do we vary this output voltage to the actual LEDs? The next few slides should give you a very basic understanding of how dimming is achieved, 
without going into too much detail. It will be enough for most people to understand the principles. Pulse width modulation, or PWM, has been in use in electronics, radar, radios, TVs and so many other things for decades. Now it can be applied to dimming LED lamps. Let's begin with no dimming. The demand by the user is for full brightness, no dimming, and so the input waveform to the voltage regulator inside the lamp is not attenuated. The full amount gets through. This means that the output of the voltage regulator is at 100% output. We get the full brightness because the voltage is at 12 volts. What happens if we only ask for 50% brightness? The input waveform to the voltage regulator is chopped to just 50%. As can be seen on the waveform, each half cycle voltage builds up to a peak and is then chopped off at the peak. Only 50% of the voltage actually gets to the voltage regulator. And this happens with every half cycle. So we have an on period, shown as a block in the bottom drawing. And then a no volts period, followed by another voltage block, and then no volts again. We can say that we have pulses of voltage, and the width of these pulses is 50% of each half waveform. The pulse width is 50% on, 50% off, 50% on, 50% off. And 50% of 12 volts is 6 volts. Half the voltage output, half the brightness output. Look how pulse width modulation can change the average voltage reaching the LED part of the lamp. Make the pulse width, the dimmer on period, much shorter than the off period, and the average voltage will fall. In this case, to just 25% or 3 volts. The LED lamp will appear very dim. Turn the brightness up, demanding 75% brightness, and the on pulse is much longer than the off period. The lamp is at 75% brightness. 75% of 12 volts will give us a 9 volt output to the LEDs. Check that the dimmer switch and the LED lamps are compatible with each other. This is one of the most common causes of flickering. The client may install LED lamps to an existing circuit that has an old style dimmer switch using leading edge technology. And the regulator circuit cannot easily cope with the sudden inrush of current as the dimmer switch is on mid-cycle. They are not compatible. Overloaded dimmer switches will flicker. Manufacturers will state on the packaging the maximum loads for their switches. If the packaging is not available, their website will almost certainly contain the relevant information, usually as a downloadable PDF. Different dimmers have different minimum settings. Some dimmers will show a flicker at the very lowest settings, and it may make better professional sense to pay the extra few pounds for a quality dimmer that will be flicker free all the way down to minimum brightness. Check the switch manufacturer's compatibility data on their websites. The data will tell you which lamps are suitable for a particular dimmer switch. Removing a standard on-off toggle switch and installing a dimmer switch should not be a problem if the preceding information is understood. The dimmer switches will follow a standard pattern of marking the terminals. Always consult the manufacturer's instructions. Some switches will have additional terminals, sometimes marked P, or adjustable screws to set thresholds. Smart switches are becoming popular and will be the subject of another video. And we should not install more than one dimmer switch per lighting circuit unless the manufacturer has specifically stated that this can be done. For a two-way lighting circuit, the dimmer switch should, ideally, be the first switch after the ceiling rose. And so we conclude this basic introduction to LED dimmers. We hope that you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at Learn Electrics. 
dot com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.